Hi guys, welcome back to Hear Our Voices. Thank you for coming back to our podcast. Thank you for being a part of our family. So I have some housekeeping to do first. In some of the videos before, we didn't have a Twitter account or IG when we first initially made the podcast, but now we do. So all the links are down below if you want to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can help us tweet out our episodes and also have conversations on there. And we also post different informations about different things happening in the homeless community and the shelters in New York City. So if you have information that you want to give or can help other people, definitely inbox me there because it's not a comment section that I see on here. I'm fairly new to this this platform, so I'm trying to learn it myself. So if you want to tweet me or inbox me at Twitter or Instagram, you can do that anytime. If you have an organization that you want to shout out or want us to get more information and want to be a part of our whole family over here of our one of our episodes on here, we can definitely get that um, on for you. Also, if you're a person who's listening and who went through this experience, who's either in a shelter right now or has been in a shelter and want to be interviewed to come on here, we are welcoming all submissions. So guys, sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of Sarah's story. This next little next little tidbit is going to be really nice. It's going to be interesting. And I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you. And I see you in the next podcast. I had mice in my room. So imagine. I'm not a, surprised. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Literally, like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm, and imagine it being a tiny room with mice and mice like that's it's not even where the mice is able to spread out and just go somewhere else like they're literally around you and it caused my son to have a walking delay because I did not want to put him on that floor I, I just believe you. oh my gosh like the development of your child can and and then they look at you like you're the problem exactly right? like this is my place this is your spot to clean up make sure yeah. everyone else around me is clean exactly like I would have put him I would have put my son on the floor no 50,000 times if there would the floor was not and the fuck the freaking curtains was like clean and and you guys like fix the AC like just things like that like they come in they had somebody exterminating that didn't fix the problem I still got <laughs> I got a hole in my vans from the mice biting Are you serious <laughs> yes I swear oh and I'm just the like, mice was hungry <laughs> <laughs> yo definitely like I'm telling you like and you know what me I, I'm 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 an aesthetic person so a hole in my vans like I was like fuck they look cute like I didn't let things stop me you got what I'm saying like I just I just walked around like nonchalant in that sense like you know what I gotta get out of here you know what I'm saying but I'm not gonna let people see me fold you know what I'm saying like Mm. I just I tried to keep my head up and it was just a lot of things going on clogged toilet oh my gosh if you got a clogged toilet don't expect them to come for like days to to make sure they're done call 311 because when I had kids (laughs) in my apartment I did I called 311 I was like oh my leaky faucet my, my room good had roaches. First it was good. Then it had roaches. Oh so because of that, I said no. Nah. First of all, my door was over two. So I'm not even supposed to be in that room at first. But I was like, um, my my faucet is not good and it was leaking. They came to my room and said, Oh, the it's not leaking. Did you turn on the water? No. How are you gonna yeah. see it was leaking if unless you turn on the water? What are you doing? So that's a yes, friend when you're in the shelter. Three one one. <laughs> I don't no, because literally, literally the fact that you said that reminded me because I almost forgot. It reminded me because they the elevator was really not working multiple times. And imagine a bunch of females because, you know, it was a lot of women. I only saw like a, a lot of uh, women there. Yeah. So not everybody had a partner to help them go up the stairs you got what I'm saying and none of them would offer to help 
You get what I'm saying? Whenever I could help, I would help. Whenever my husband could help, he would help. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was so hard. And then once, like, I, I, I completely lost after the third time the elevator was broken. They didn't fix it for a while. I called through one. <laughs> I called through one, one. And they was like, they, they tried to ask me for my name and stuff. And I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, I, can't. <laughs> I don't care. I've been telling my name. I told my room number. I'm on the first floor. I'm on the third floor. <laughs> You know my name. I don't play. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. No, literally, that's how it was. Like, but me, I, I'm an anxious person, like as well. Like being in the shelter, it, it like triggered a lot of my mental like illnesses that I had. So it made it like worse, and it, it was just not a a happy place to be in. I was very miserable every single day. I was crying. I did not want to be there. And basically, have I want to know, like, have you ever been, like, in a shelter where you just smell, like, like a bunch of smoke and you smell, like, people just didn't care, like, of the building type of thing? Surprisingly, I haven't. The, I see people do, like, I didn't see fights. But I heard about the fights and the police will come <laughs> to the place. And my shelter, we actually had metal detectors. They're very, they're known to be a bad shelter. Like fights really? always breaking out. People always going to the hospital. I used to live in the landing in Queens. And yeah. it was just it was just known. Like you were asked, I went to the emergency room one time and they said, Oh yeah, we know that shelter. I'm like, wow. But people to know, and the, sh- the hospital's not that close to the um the place. Probably the closest yeah. one to that shelter though. Probably that's why they know so many people who live there. But it says stuff is always happening there. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That this is about so, that life. Yeah, literally. And I say that because um, I have this lady who was um, like staying in a, in a room next to me and she was an addict and she would go, she would, I would always hear the baby crying like nonstop. I didn't think anything of it because, you know, it was just a newborn baby and, you know, babies could be colicky. I didn't think in my brain anything. And she would go, um, you would smell smoke. Um, people used to smoke downstairs in the third, uh, we, we were on the third floor, so we'd be on the second and fourth, like up and down. And the firefighters used to come all the time too. And so, like I was saying, P, how I've been in situations where I used to get into um, an argument, but there was this one specific worker um, who basically, like, I felt her energy in a way. And I remember, like, I was standing one time. She kind of bumped me into my shoulder, but she didn't say sorry or anything. I I let that go because me, I I really do not like I don't like confrontation it's not that I'm afraid it's not that none of that it's when you have a mental illness and a lot of people come out for me you want to avoid like a lot of things make you more anxious you get what I'm saying where you try to hold how you feel so it was kind of that situation and basically um I don't even like talking about it, but just I, I, I want to put my story out there because I want people to understand when you walk into the shelter, they are paying attention to you. Yeah. And they they are like a lot of people would just look at you and not like you just because they just have this image of you just because you're in the shelter that you're not worth anything. You're a bum. You're this, you're that. Like, literally, I've got called that. And... So basically, um, this person, this person, she, um, she basically, uh, she had stated to, um, someone that I, okay, let me just give a back check. Cause even the people in the shelter knew my routine. I'm not going to hide it. I smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? Because it helps my anxiety and it helps with, uh, and I have a medical card just to put that out there, uh, with what's going on with me. And I used to take a break um, when, like, my son was sleeping, like, at night night. It would be, like, at a, like, about 11, 12. Every single night I would go the same way they would go outside and do the same thing, the workers. And I would take, like, a little break and I would always go back inside. That was a routine for me um every day and it was always at night because it helps me go to sleep uh because I have insomnia as well so 
um, basically one day, um, I guess my husband, like he had, um, you know, some recreational marijuana on him and basically she asked him, oh, are you smoking? And cause you know, if you have something, it, it smells a little bit. She asked him, uh, do you, do, are you smoking in the room? Like in the room? He said, no, I'm not smoking in the room. She took it upon herself because I already felt that animosity towards her and just things that were like accumulating. Uh, she called ACS on me, which was like the most craziest thing because wow yeah which was most the most craziest things because they're literally I've seen nothing but addicts in that hotel that we were staying in nothing but like people like fighting screaming so they almost upstairs they almost they, there was almost a fire the fire people which I think that this um the smell will kind of circulate to everywhere. You got what I'm saying? But like I said, this person, I, I knew her game. And that's why it didn't work when she did try to do that. It didn't work. So um, I had a situation with that. And I, it, it really brought me to a dark place because I've done everything that I can in my power to take care of my child. If anybody knows me, knows I'm the best mother you ever like you know what I'm saying you would see me in those holy bands and my son it just it's it's I make sure he's good you know what I'm saying like yeah so through that situation it 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 broke me in half like I was crying I was like how could like how could this happen to me like why am I going through this like as soon as I go to a shelter this this is happening to me or for somebody being petty and like I said me and her after that situation me and her like was like about to like fight because I'm not a fighting person but it was like that situation like I said I wish I would have done things differently just ignored but I just feel like something like that like it, it just you just can't ignore that you know you just something like that like I had to say something and it was really really bad and she kept saying like a bunch of things and my that night after that situation had happened they the the people who worked there knocked on my door and they tried to say while I was sleeping and uh they tried to say that oh because you know how some shelters like I forgot to mention that there's they but they book hotels rooms with people who are not staying in the shelter so it's half and half it will be a shelter and it will also be a regular hotel so they yeah, used to I heard have, about those. I heard about yeah, those. Yeah, that's the one that I was saying. And, and now they're full-blown shelter. But before, they tried to accuse me of going. <laughs> oh, my gosh. When I think about it, it's hilarious. They tried. Because if I would have did it, I would have said I would have did it. Like, but they tried to accuse me of, of eating the, the guest food. <laughs> Do you hear that? Are like, you serious? You, I'm done. Yes. <laughs> 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 like, like, how the fuck are you? It was literally insane. And I'm like, what the? My husband was like, what the heck? She was literally in bed because he's up early. He will go early um every day, like around six to take a walk, um to like do like a run or a walk. And um, yeah. He knew I was sleeping and he was like, what? Like she, my, my, well, let me say, she was like, let me tell you something. My wife does not get up from this bed, has not gotten up from this bed. And I'm here to witness that. And they just didn't want to hear. And I'm like, and I was like, you know what? Like the next day when I woke up, I told someone, I was like, can I please see your cameras? Like, I want to see the cameras of you saying that I did that. That's how confident I was in like, this this is outrageous after a situation a traumatizing situation that happened to me that night you you go and you do something and I know it was her who probably said that because it just it just makes sense you know so there was a lot of people like I'm saying like people just look at you and just like just so so mean like you know yeah so mean like for no reason and that's that's one incident I got into, but thank God I don't have that situation anymore. Like it was never gonna work because it was never true, you know. Because like they they you know with those type of situations they it it was I wouldn't say like 
I want to explain it. They just knew that it was a false accusation, basically. Let's just sum it up like that. And everything got dismissed, basically. It was just the whole point of going through something like that because I'm not that type of person. And and I felt like my character was diminished. I felt so like, what the heck, you know? But that was the first situation. And then the second situation, don't be surprised if if someone, if any of you people who are listening to this, any of you families, don't be surprised if you end up getting into an argument with the cleaning lady. I'm like, done. That, <laughs> I'm telling you, like, it was crazy because literally I had told her because my son, um, he, he, he got very sick. He, he, um, and the, um, air conditioner was on. And I had to tell her, like, when the child is saying, you can't have the AC on, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't, like, I couldn't have the AC on. And I kept trying to explain that to her. She got all fussy about it. And we started arguing about the situation. And I was just like, how are you getting mad over that? You know what I'm saying? And just the way that they talk to you, oh, I'm not going to argue with no B from the shelter. Like, things that they say. You, you, um, she told me, you Spanish bees. Like, she was just saying a bunch of, like, crazy things to me. Like, just, wow. just, just yeah, like, pl- completely ripping me, like, to shreds from there. And I was just like, listen, I'm not even. And after that, that's when I just started cleaning my own room. That's when I was just like, you know what, this is why I don't like nobody in my space. This is why, of course, I was already cleaning my room, but I meant as far as I don't need them to clean my room. I don't need them to come in to, 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 to put on my own sheet. I could do that myself. You know what I'm saying? Because they tried to say one time, like, it's mandatory and they have to. But no, I, w- I wasn't with any of that. I don't know these ladies. I don't know what these, the, these ladies could be judging us. But what are you doing when you're in my room? You got what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on when I'm not there you're in your room so I just told them like I don't want to like you know I only time I would let them come in is if they had to vacuum the floor because it was rug and there was um mice in there so I had to just do that as far as everything I just I just stayed away after that <laughs> it was it was really hard yeah and the case manager um situations with the case manager um she didn't even tell me I had a voucher until two months after that what yep. oh she my not, gosh yep she did not tell me i could not she didn't tell me oh i was furious. Mm-hmm. i was furious and i'm like you know what well say nothing i'm not gonna say anything i just let it go like i literally let it go but it was so messed up because i could have been out of there earlier but at the end of the day god works in mysterious ways and everything happened for a reason so um, basically, like sh- when they sh- they tell you what voucher you qualify for, um, when that situation came about, she told me um, what voucher I did qualify for, which was the, either the city fest, um, and that was it. They didn't tell me that I could do a soda program. If I would have knew I was it, like she just didn't tell me the proper information because they offer anybody when they go to the shelter, they offer you a soda program. If you want to move out of the state for a year, they'll pay you. You just got to have a job out there. You just got to be settled out there. But it was just a lack of communication, not telling me all my options, just saying, oh, you have this and that's it. I didn't only have that. I had more to do it because if I would have known I had that, I wouldn't even be in New York, you know? So it was just things like that. Also, she did offer me... um, it was just one other thing. It's like um, people who have um, a, a mental illness, um, because it was on my record, um, that they have special housing for um, people who have mental illnesses. And basically they pay, um, they pay 30, you, they pay for this, for you living in the shelter, I think for like, She's apparently from her, she said forever, basically, you know, up until like, you know, like just always, they're always going to pay for it. Um, and there's just always like somebody, basically those type of, uh, those type of housing, there's always someone on site for when, you know, you're going through your situation. So they have those housing as well available for people, just in case anybody didn't know, neither. All you just need is like your, your proof of, um, your mental illnesses and things like that.
I don't know if you want to get into it, but I do want to ask. I don't. You don't. You can tell us what you have per se, but if you could tell us how did it affect you, probably being a mental a person who has mental illnesses, how did it affect you being in the shelter? Oh yeah, definitely. I actually posted a video. <laughs> That's crazy that you said that. I actually posted a video, but I I put it on private just because, like, I don't know. Like, I just put it on private after I spoke about it, but it's not, it's not easy. And mind you, I don't just have like one mental illness. I have three. So I have, um, I have anxiety, OCD and PTSD. So all of that, you know, comes from like upbringing and things that I've been through and being in a shelter, it triggered every single one of those. Like, and I just found myself like, I literally found myself where I wanted to like, like, I don't like saying it because like, it sounds like so like, you know, but like, that's not, I just want disclaimer. It's not, that's not how I feel anymore. You know, like I've moved on. Like my life is like very good right now, going very good. Um, But I found myself like at a place where I just wanted to kill myself. Like I just, I like, I despised it. Like that's how bad it was. Like, I probably still have some, like, scars, like, on um, my arms and stuff. Like, it was just, it, it was very, very hard for me. And that's why I say, like, because I'm not the only one. I'm literally not the only one. There are so many people out there who suffer from mental illness. And especially when you're mixing and um, triggering things, like, especially in the shelter. I know there's a bunch of, bunch of people who suffer from mental illness and they're living in the shelter and I know every day it is not easy it's only harder and harder and harder but I want to be the one of many as an example that if I can do this I know you can do this as well and I will never say it's easy because it is not easy and you and it you can and possibly fall so many times during the process but don't beat yourself up about it because mental illness people think that you can just control that people think that oh you can control it like you can control it like if I can do it you can do it no it's it doesn't work like that everybody it's a chemical imbalance in your brain and people suffer from it in different ways and people handle it and cope with it in different ways and having a child when dealing with that oh my lord it's it's tested me so many times and the crazy thing is is after I had my child is when everything started happening my anxiety my PTSD and my OCD it's I had postpartum basically so I had postpartum depression while I was also in the shelter mixed with all those other things and it was so freaking hard I kid you not but thank you Thank the Lord, I had God on my side and I had my husband and it was just, it was, I wasn't going through it alone. And I was fortunate enough to have that. And I know there's a lot of people who don't have that. And that's why I know it's like really, really, really hard, but I promise you it's going to get better. Like I promise you, like you will not be there forever. There's people, I can tell you this right now, there's people in the, there's people in the shelter that want to be there. Like literally, I've been in the shelter and I've seen that there's people that actually want to be there. And there's people that, that, that don't want to leave the shelter. There's people that got uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? And I just want people to know, don't get comfortable. It's not, it's not a good feeling. I'm telling you, just don't get comfortable. And I'm, it's like really hard to talk about because I don't know how to like say it because I don't really broadcast my um my mental illnesses. So forgive my stuttering because that's also like I start stuttering and stuff when I get like anxious about things. But yeah, so that's pretty much what I was going through and how like you did great. I didn't (laughs) care if you're stuttering. You're fine. I do have (laughs) anxiety myself. Um, yeah so I definitely understand I think I have a more for certain situations though, like doctors and sometimes crowds you know I'm a theater person so I definitely yeah. understand and like I'm, I'm racing while a minute I'm trying to get it you know out the way but I really I do thank you for sharing your story 
another thing because you did say it earlier that yeah. life is so much better now can you give us an update about how your life is right now and how you're going and things like that um so basically yes I can basically now I'm in a better like situation like I'm now at a point where like I you know I got settled into my apartment and it's been it's been a weird situation because I'm not used to like having my own like place and just you know like just having your own stuff like but this when is did you where, move out of the shelter how long were you there sorry to interrupt <laughs> no it's okay um I'm okay so I went into the shelter um towards the end of August and I left in January so I came in August left in January uh signed my lease February uh the end of January because the process they got to do an inspection they have to get papers and documents sent over and that could take about one to two weeks or to a month um so yeah I signed my apartment then and you can also check out everybody that's listening on my YouTube I have the video of moving in um but this is where people think okay I don't explain it so (laughs) when you're moving in with like having a voucher keep there is some I would advise you not to have a landlord I'm just keeping it a thousand like where my mistake was is that I jumped in like so fast but it's like how could you not you know like you're getting apartment thrown at you especially when you don't have credit when you don't have these things and you're young it was hard not to take it you know and especially the situation that I was going through I just took it but I would advise a lot of people just do don't settle for less like I did my apartment is like don't get me wrong my apartment is very nice and I'm so grateful it's just the landlord you get what I'm saying it's just what has been going on inside my apartment things that are not being fixed that are supposed to be fixed a lot of things that's just been happening and because they think because they think when you're young and I'm speaking to a lot of like young parents who end up moving in and if you end up coming about the situation that you don't know you get what I'm saying they think because you're young that they can play you or they think that you don't know um certain things so they can just speak for you in certain situations I don't know if you like understand like what I'm you understand what I'm saying right I understand what you're saying definitely yeah so it was just it's very complicated now but I'm still like I'm I'm still doing good like I'm still doing good regardless of anything but I would just like advise people don't jump at the first thing that you see just give more research into it until you're like gut feels like yeah this is where I want to move this is what I want to do because I promise you God has opportunities for every single body and you will always get your blessing like I promise you um but yeah so um it's been now uh it's about to make almost two years that I've been there um but God has blessed me so much where I plan on now looking for like a new apartment because there's a lot of times where people move in and people don't know how to go about like um as well like um transferring because transferring is also another issue that happens too when you have a voucher and a lot of people like find themselves having a need to transfer because you could think one place is so good until you've actually lived there like for so long um but I just um, always like go to a home base. Like if you're thinking about transferring to just to give some like information, um, go to a home base. They can help you with that as well. Call the city yes. center. They can help you with that as well. Because I know there's a, I have this group on Facebook and I see a lot of people like they have a vouchers and they're going through so much things like in their apartment, like things falling apart and they can't move and just stuff like that. Like a lot of messed up things. Um, and they think that they can play you because at the end of the day, they're receiving their checks from the government. They don't like, they just like have this like mentality. Yeah. People just always judging you because of that, you know? And at this point it's like, 
just at this point just like don't be mad because i have one of you don't like you know that's how i feel at this point like but i'm now like in a place where like now i'm able to like do more things and um like not rely as much as i needed to on the voucher anymore like i'm at that place where like i'm blessed enough you know congrats congrats thank you but yeah so i just like i i want everybody that situation is situation to go through but everybody will get through it in that shelter everybody will make it out i promise you i think people think that the reason why we're in the shelter is that we don't care about ourselves and, our yeah. kids and that oh, we're not good enough, we don't have money. You can't up in a shelter for a lot of different things. And a lot of times, a lot of people, especially in New York City, live from paycheck to paycheck. And when, especially when yeah. the rent is going up, it's hard to do that. And the reason why we do go to shelter yeah. is because we want a better life for our children. Not because yes. we have to be lazy. We want a oh better life gosh. for our kids. Yes. And you know what's crazy? People also forget that a lot of people as well that are in the shelter is because their lights shut off. They have no hot water. They like there's more to it that people think, or they got evicted. Like there's not just oh you don't have money. I need I there's a lot of first of all there's most of the people that in the shelter have jobs. They exactly. have jobs. Like that's what's crazy about it. Like all of them have jobs, and you have to. And regardless of anything, you have they when you're dealing with um like a public because i also you need a public assistance case i totally forgot to mention that yeah um, do. yes you need a public assistance case that's the that's where the city Beps voucher comes from so um yeah like i literally just forgot my train of thought just now <laughs> like i literally forgot that's what i'm saying like with anxiety like you just forget sometimes so um could you like remind me what I was saying? I'm sorry. No problem. I think you were saying um you could go different reasons of being in the shelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lights and stuff like that. Yes. So um basically they just have this perspective of people, and that's just not what it is. That's just not what it is. And the, everybody needs to start. I just think that everybody in this world in general needs to be more informed about certain things like that because without you knowing like the situation like a path like without knowing this actual information you're just going to go about judging people and just go about looking at people in certain ways without even knowing you know what i'm saying i just feel like um it should be more funded as well there should be uh the path should be very more funded as in like more donating more like oh, i don't know the word for it like just so people could be could have better places to stay let's just put it that way yeah. where they, we're not going into a situation where there's mice or you're such in a tiny room and there has to look at how we live in new york city you got what i'm saying yeah. we live in a place where there are so many buildings and there's so much more land that can be put to use and a lot of these things are not being put to use the proper way you have a lot of i'm not saying gentrification is not is not i'm not saying it's bad but it's kind of bad you know it's bad yeah. and, you know it for the simple fact is that just oh lord i don't even want to get into that hole you know but <laughs> it's just how, like because like, i know it could be a very very touchy subject but when you're in this situation it's the truth you're moving in a bunch of gentrification people let's just call them that and you're forgetting about the people who've lived here for years you got what i'm saying yeah. the people who this is our home type of thing and you should help the people who have been living here for so long more Buying from than the stores yes sure, you know you get money in your pocket because we're paying your rent things like exactly. that you know come on yeah and it's i i just hope that we come like because i know now you know they're doing elections for a new mayor and things like that so i just hope you know let's just hope moving forward because i hear a lot of things about new affordable housing and stuff like that let's just hope that 
that happens because even when NYCHA, that was what I was praying for that I got, that, that's what I wanted originally. I wanted NYCHA, but it is so hard. So I think I'm still on the waiting list. <laughs> you have to update it every couple of months. That's why, girl, don't try to live in NYCHA. I live in NYCHA now. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm happy. I like, I feel, you know, I don't know if you get this. Like, I feel bad complaining about my apartment because I was, I came from the shelter and it's like, this is better than shelter, so you shouldn't complain. Yeah, but you know what you deserve. At the exactly. End of the day. I don't like elevators breaking down every minute. Like, yes, I yeah. up for that. You know what I'm saying? If I have groceries, I'm going to get up all them stairs with a broken elevator. That How is. in the winter time I don't have heat? How, and I'm, I mean, literally only one part of my apartment or two parts of my apartment have heat. Why is water off in the winter time? Wow. Why is there not hot water? So people think that, you know, yeah, it's yes. better than rent in NYCHA, but I want heat in the winter. When it's two degrees outside, I think I deserve yeah. at least 20% heat. Like, I'm not even asking for the whole nine. Yes. But just- no, you do deserve, definitely. Exactly. And, so it's like- and I don't want people to, like, that because you know how some people are, they'll be like, oh, just be grateful, just be grateful. No. Exactly. You don't have to be grateful. Like, not that you don't have to be grateful, but you don't have to settle for less right thing. you don't have to settle for 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 bs and just because you're in that situation you shouldn't like lower your standards you get what i'm saying like i was saying when i said don't jump at the first thing that comes you know always think about it before you do it you know but honestly i'm not gonna lie to you i saw the apartment for NYCHA and the person because yeah, my case manager came with me and I'm, i mean my housing specialist yeah and he told me out of the apartments he have seen this is a big apartment now mind you I have a one bedroom I have a daughter so yeah she's not six until August so I couldn't get a two bedroom because she's a girl if she yeah. was a boy I was so I would have got two bedroom literally I did my interview for NYCHA the week before and the next week they was calling me to come in which from what I hear is very fast but I made sure I bring in every yeah. document they asked for I made sure I brought in every single thing at the time I was yes. married, I bring that paperwork in to make sure they couldn't de- like you know prolong the process. I didn't want that to yeah. happen. But I took the first thing he told me because he, you know, they get to go to all the um the, the apartments with people. So he told me yeah. what he's seen is very good and it was newly renovated. You could tell that they put on a fresh coat of paint, like the um it was I think the stove was in here. It's not that the stove or the fridge was in here. The stove was new, the fridge was new. You know, they're not gonna give me the wow. best quality of yeah. these things, but it's still, you know, it was new. I think a person before me was living here for a while and you could tell that certain things were new in the apartment, like like paint and stuff. It's not like it was like most, you know, Hilton of um apartments, it's still NYCHA. But yeah, he said, take what you can get. Was it the lady was telling me they don't they don't know when they'll be able to show me another apartment if I even get one even in this area or yeah. any oh, and I know yeah, like yeah. so I took the first thing, knowing that said long, long once you're in NYCHA is even though it's hard to get transferred, it's easier to move around when you're in the system that part already. If you're out of it trying yeah. to come in, I think it's harder for you to get an apartment. I think with NYCHA, though, there's an exception because I do agree with the t- when it when for NYCHA is just different because like I, like you were saying, the process is different. Yeah. NYCHA is like an absolute rent controlled thing, you know? Right. Like I know somebody that only pays 200 in rent in a big big one bedroom of, of apartment like things and they pay for everything like light heat everything so yeah they that's do, why yeah let me Unless tell you a washing machine you gotta blessing. pay like four dollars a month or five dollars oh, that is a blessing feel. that is a blessing let me tell yes. you that's one of us so much because now i gotta pay all this utilities and all these things and then him telling me i he told me i can't have a washing machine i bought a i bought a portable washing machine right the next day <laughs> because <laughs> like covid happened and all these things and they try to tell you oh you can't have this you can't know and and especially now i have like um mice in my apartment right now oh man like, yes and thank god i have cats because they tried to tell me i can't have cats but thank god for my cats because they're on it every single time that's why i don't worry about them at all <laughs> because they're literally cleaning them up for me every single time i haven't seen one in a while now and That's thank good. God for my cats. And he needs to be thanking um God too. And the funny part is, is that he is, I live on top of a church, girl. Oh wow. I live on top of a church and he is the pastor. He's the one that rented the apartment. Oh to me. wow. And me, yes, and you will really see someone's true colors because the, the the person that I know of him 
is nowhere yeah. near pastor nowhere near wow. i see a money hungry yep i see a money hungry person and it's and it, it, it sickens me because i believe in god i read the bible i go to church and it's it's crazy to me like you know like it's just crazy to me like you really see how people really are when you live with them that's you know true. so it's like it's crazy but i i'm 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 not doing too bad you know i can't complain that's what i'm trying to say i understand i understand but do you have any last words for the viewer well not viewers podcasters i don't know what you call them <laughs> the listeners <laughs> right the Thank listeners you. <laughs> oh you're welcome um yeah um basically keep your head up um i'm telling you you will get through this like i love supporting women i love supporting families i love supporting everybody you know and when it comes to this situation i love being able to help because not there there are there's you there's me who do youtube and who put this information out because i don't see any else besides i think one other youtuber but uh, um she it, she's not enough she's like a cup married with somebody so it's different in a way um i more so give information on families because that's what i know you know best about yeah. and like me and you there's not a lot of people to give that information you know what i'm saying like at all like i feel like well you do and and what i do when we put this type of information out because even though i still haven't been updated with my youtube i still receive messages daily. yeah me too yeah i still receive messages and i still put effort into whatever i'm doing i stop what i'm doing i sit there for like about 20 minutes just writing paragraphs of how to help somebody like that's how much i care and that's how much I want to help people and I'm just glad that I'm able to share. I'm glad you guys reached out to me again. And so I could just say my um, piece again, but this time I was able to like share thoroughly because the last time it was more so like, <laughs> it was more so like a fast, yeah, it was yeah. more like a fast thing, like moving on type of thing. Yeah, but now right. it's like, uh, I get to speak thoroughly. I get to, um, say more things and i get to be a part of something where i could share my full full story and i think that's amazing and i think um you guys starting this podcast is really amazing too because now people can just you guys are on apple music now i mean i'm apple, sorry you guys are doing the podcast on apple it's gonna go on there right um as i said before it's not gonna launch until september and but it's gonna go right now on anchor and then okay. it's gonna go to Spotify. Oh, and I think Spotify so. is Apple. I'm not even sure. I don't really know the podcast world as much. I know I watch. Yeah. Um, well, watch. I listen to stuff on the Apple podcast. Yeah, but it's yeah. Able that's able to yeah. share out to both of those things. So yeah, it goes. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you guys. I'm so excited for everybody to hear my story, my yes. version, and I hope. Um, I know I'm not. I'm not the only one, right? That um, you guys are uh asked for the information no you're not the only one hold on for a second Sarah. so guys thank you for listening to the podcast thank you for hearing her story and i hope you can identify and know when you see a person who's homeless don't look down on them and don't make them feel a way like they're not totally. human they are so yeah guys, totally yes so <laughs> talk to you guys later see thank you guys so much <laughs> yeah see you in the next one and yeah. Bye. Thank Thanks for hearing our voices. So